Hey guys, happy Friday. Welcome back to the channel. My name is Mike and on today's episode, we are going to be continuing our nervous system series with an in-depth look at the second main structure of the central nervous system, the spinal cord. Last week, we dove into the major structures of the brain. So if you missed that video, click the eye above my head to check it out. With all that said, let's dive in and get started. Remember, the central nervous system consists of the brain and spinal cord. The brain receives, interprets, and sends electrically charged neural signals to control all the body's daily functions. The spinal cord is the carrier on which these messages travel to and from the rest of the body. The spinal cord itself is a direct extension of the brain stem, coming off directly from the medulla oblongata through the foramen magnum and extending down the center of the back 40 to 50 centimeters, that's 50 to 25 inches, ending around the area of the second lumbar vertebrae. The 1 to 1.5 centimeter wide, or 0.3 to 0.5 inches, for us Americans, is protected by three meningi layers and cushioned by cerebrospinal fluid, while enclosed in the bony spinal column made up of vertebrae. The structure as a whole is typically divided into three main regions, the cervical, the thoracic, and the lumbar. However, there are some neurology texts that include a fourth region named the sacral region. Before we continue, make sure to answer that question of the day in the comments below. Does your EMS system still backboard patients? Now, let's take a cross section of the spinal cord. There are four main structures here that we need to mention. The first is gray matter. The gray matter is the dark butterfly shaped region of the spinal cord made up of nerve cell bodies. Second is the white matter. The white matter surrounds the gray matter in the spinal cord and contains neural cells coated in myelin. The myelin makes nerve transmission occur that much more quickly. Nerve cells in the gray matter are not heavily coated with this myelin. Third is the spinal ganglion. The spinal ganglion is a cluster of nerve bodies that contains the sensory neurons. And finally, we have the spinal nerves. There's 31 pairs of spinal nerves and they control the sensation as well as some movement to the body. We will cover the spinal nerves in more depth in a future video on this channel as they're really a part of the peripheral nervous system. I will be doing a future video specifically on spinal cord injuries. I need to mention that due to the highly specialized neural cells within the spinal cord, injuries to that area are typically permanent as the cells do not have the ability to heal and or reproduce. However, if your nerve is bruised or traumatized, but is not cut, it should recover in about six to eight weeks. Make sure to join us next week, guys, when we break down the first part of the peripheral nervous system, the so very important to EMS providers, the autonomic nervous system. In the meantime, stay safe out there, and I will see you guys in the next video.